Get ready to bite my head. And then a bunch of dating services run commercials on TV, and those convince me I never want to be dating again. Because, <laughs> first of all, there's the one where apparently this old creepy guy has to come on your date with you. Because that's part of the service. It's like, bubble, bubble, harmony, bubble, bubble, old creepy guy here on your date with you. Romantic boat, oars, pastoral scene. Who's in the boat with you, old creepy guy? Oh, hi everyone. Uh, welcome to the show. I was talking about online dating because uh, I've talked about John before uh, and John loves it when I talk about John. Uh, John's back in the dating pool um, for reasons. Uh, we're not going to go into the reasons. We are sad. We're sad. But we have moved on. We have moved on from the sad. Now, now we just want John to find someone to date so he'll stop talking about how miserable he is and not dating. Um, he can move on to being dating and miserable. It's the next stage uh, on the steps of grief. First of all, there's no one will date me. Then there's people will date me, but I don't like them. Then there's I'm dating. That lasts like a day and a half. Then there's I'm dating and miserable. Uh, last one is I'm dead. Uh, I think uh, it was on Oprah. There was a book. A woman wrote about it. It was very popular. Um, moving on uh, from John's dating thing, which he tells us does not involve Tinder this time, so there's a chance it'll work out, because John, we assume, gets a lot of swipe lefts. <laughs> um, anyway, we were, I was talking, so I, I, it's been a long time. Uh, as you know, I got married a year ago, like last week, uh, but I've been living with the same person for 28 ish years. I'm going to get it wrong and she's going to yell at me for 20 <laughs> high 20s, like a lot, somewhere in the high 20s number of years. See, we got married so that I don't have to remember the exact number anymore. Now I just remember one year. We've been married for one year and we dated for a long time before that. Something in the 20s. I'm in so much trouble. I'm in huge amounts of trouble right now, people. But Wow, John tells me I'm not in trouble, but he would lie to me during the show. <laughs> so I, I don't quite know whether, where, where to go with that. Um, anyway, here's what I know about online dating, um, or about dating these days. First of all, you have to give money to someone to help you date, because it's too hard to do by yourself. Uh, like everything, like you can't, you got to give money to help you buy a car or a house, you got to pay a broker, you got to pay this. Um, you got to go to these online dating sites, uh, and like there's... There's the one where the creepy old guy apparently has to come on the dates with you because that's how it works. You answer a bunch of questions, and then a creepy old guy shows up and makes sure no hanky-panky happens, I think. Um, and then eventually the two of you decide, we really hate this old creepy guy, and you stop inviting him, and then you're actually dating. Um, and then the other one, this I'm sure is a prank. I don't know who's doing it. Uh, someone's spending a lot of money on this prank. It's farmers only. Okay. There's no dating site for farmers only. But, oh, city folks don't understand. We're farmers. We live in the country. We have exciting dating lives. And a dating site, someone is pranking us. Like, like Elon Musk or I keep expecting to turn on the, the Jimmy Kimmel show and have him go, my longest prank ever. I've been running this thing called FarmersOnly.com ads on TV for five years now. And people keep coming to this website and giving us credit card. Farmers only, people. It's insane. Uh, like, think of any of, like, like, firemenonly.com. That's probably more of a gay dating site. But, like, you <laughs> take another, take another, like, plumbers only, right? There's no plumbersonly.com where plumbers can date other plumbers because they understand plumbing. This is, I'm just digging myself deeper here. Yes, so yes. I'm going to stop talking about the plumber's dating site. Uh, I make a mental note to not buy plumbersonly.com as a domain name and put up a fake dating site for plumbers. <sighs> anyway, like I said, uh, it's November. It's not November. What is November? Uh, it just finished being October, uh, which means it just finished being Halloween. Uh, and Halloween for me, Halloween is, is often, in, in terms of holidays, it's the high point of the year almost. Um, I think it's a high point of the year because Christmas, 
there's a lot of stuff for Christmas, and it always seems kind of, it gets dragged out. I mean, I was in a store, November 1st, they'd put up Christmas decorations. Uh, when I'm benevolent dictator for life, that's going to be an offense. I don't think it's going to be a, I don't think it's going to be on the death penalty list. Uh, I'm not sure any will. It's not that big of an offense, but like if you put up Christmas stuff before Thanksgiving, uh, your name's going to go on a, on a list of people that should be mocked and just relentlessly mocked for putting up Christmas things a full two and a half months before Christmas or whatever the number is. It's, we, we, we can't keep bleeding the holidays into the previous holidays. Uh, eventually we'll run out of holidays and we'll all be confused. Um, Halloween, Halloween for me is, is, is interesting. For, I didn't used to care about Halloween uh, until a couple years ago. Uh, my sister-in-law, Maureen, she always had a big Halloween party. Uh, she and her boyfriend at the time. And they invited everyone though to their house. Uh, and it turns out they knew kind of a lot of vaguely psychopathic people and a lot of nice people. <laughs> we were the nice people. But we'd go to this big party and there'd be a lot of people there drinking and, and doing other things. We weren't big on the other things. Um, but a good time would be had. Uh, and then Maureen broke up with her boyfriend. Uh, and in the settlement, she got Halloween. You know, she got all the pictures, uh, she got the bed, she got Halloween. Uh, so after that, Maureen kept wanting to have a big Halloween party. That's what you did at Halloween. You have a big party, you invite all your adult friends over, and you're like, we're having a party. You should come to our party, and then we'll be having a party at the same place. And we'll provide beverages of a delightful adult kind, and some food, and we'll all get together. It'll be, it'll be fun, uh, and we'll all wear costumes. And, and that's what we did. Like one year for her party, I, I went as the king of the universe from that, that Sony PlayStation game. It was great. I only have one picture of me in the costume, though. <laughs> so I can't really prove it very well. Where was I going? Anyway, so we inherited this party for Maureen. Uh, and for a couple years, I sh Maureen and Loretta and I would have this party. We'd invite all our friends. We'd go over to the clubhouse. I bought a drink-making robot for the Halloween party on Kickstarter because I got more money than cents. But it was always very popular. I would set up the drink making robot and people would tap on the little iPod screen and they would go, I would like a drink. And then bingo, they got a drink. Um, it, it should really be a little harder than that, I think, in retrospect. Uh, I thought of how to fix it. Here's an idea I had for this. The thought was you got an iPad so there should be a little, like a little coordination game you got to play. And depending on how good you are is how strong or weak it makes the drink. So that like at the beginning of the party, when you can quick follow a little bouncing dot with your finger, you get a strong drink. And by later in the night when you're like, okay, you get three quarters water. But you don't notice. Um, I, I, I'm going to see if it's patentable. I mean, that might be patentable. Like a, I, it's probably not. Um, that's my, sadly, I've just given it away on live television, so I can no longer patent that idea, apparently. We're not live. We are, we're live on the internet. We're streaming live. We we're being watched by nobody. I'm going to say nobody. <laughs> uh, if I go to our Ustream channel and look right now, uh, there will be like two robots in a little transcript channel, and one of them will be asking the other one of them about dogs. Because every time I have gone to my Ustream channel, there have been this, this little fake conversation. They're trying to imply there is a Keith Explains live watching community, much like YouTube with uh, the people with the tens of thousands of subscribers. I have two poorly written Perl scripts, one of which likes to talk about dogs and the other one of which likes to ask questions about what the first one is talking about which therefore involves two robots talking to each other about dogs. <laughs> but, you know, what are you going to do? Um, if you are watching this live, you can tweet in. Because if you tweet, my phone will make a noise. If you send me a tweet, my phone would make that Twitter noise. See, nobody's watching us live, people. Um, anyway. We inherited the party. We ran the party with Maureen for a number of years. Good time was had by all. Uh, and then, as you know, Maureen died. 
horribly. Right. She just, we don't know what happened. Um, she was here one day, and then she said, I'm, I'm moving to Oklahoma and getting married. And I was like, that's nice. And then last I heard, she was dead uh, or something. Dead to me, maybe, because she moved to Oklahoma far away and, and did not help me with the Halloween party this year. So this year, Loretta and I had to put on the Halloween party ourselves. Uh, and we were thinking of making it a Maureen Memorial <laughs> Halloween party. But we didn't do that. Uh, we just said it's a, the theme was to infinity and beyond. And we thought we'd get like Buzz Lightyear people uh, or whatever. I, I was dressed as an astronaut because that's, that's all future-y. Uh, space shuttle astronaut, orange jumpsuit, patches, special collar to go inside the thing in your head. I didn't have the thing in my head. I just had a NASA hat because this was an indoor party. So I didn't need to have protected myself against the vacuum of space. <laughs> Plus those costumes are hot, really ungodly hot. It helps that in the vacuum of space, it's like four degrees above absolute zero. And so you can stay cool. <sighs> anyway, we had no Marine. So we had to do everything ourselves. We had to make all the food. Um, and we, we made a moderate amount of food, not as much as Maureen used to make. Like when, when Maureen was, was doing this party, we would all make some food and then we would be eating leftover Halloween party food for three weeks. <laughs> we would have to make a list of all the food we had made for the Halloween party and then next to it write how long before that food went bad. Then we have to sort that list because some of it You'd have to eat early because it wouldn't make it three weeks. And other bits, um, we, we did make and buy a bunch of food for the party and we set it out. And I, I think people had a great time. Uh, I had been drinking a little bit. So <laughs> by the end, I'm not sure if the people that got there late had a great time or not. But I was having an okay time and they seemed to be okay too. Um, we made... We also like bought a lot of food and you buy the food, you take it over, you put it in the refrigerator. After the party, uh, I always discover that there's a lot of food in the fridge that we forgot to put out. Because you kind of, you put food out at the start of the party and you're like, well, as, as it clears out, we will put more food out. You know, like we will buy a vegetable plate and a fruit plate and another vegetable plate and another fruit plate for when those are empty. Um, but the next day we had two fruit plates and a vegetable plate in the fridge because never occurred to us to go get another thing from the fridge during the party. So it just sat there and then we ate, veg we ate vegetables and fruit. It was delicious. Um, uh, I bought Lego silicon molds so I could make Lego jello shots. Uh, I remember trying to make jello shots in college I had heard about them and I was like, man, that sounds great. And now I am 19 years old and legally able to drink. And so I will make jello shots for a party in my dorm room without really an internet to go look for instructions. And jello doesn't print the instructions for jello shots on the side of the box. <laughs> I don't know why. I kind of assume that's their number three market, but. They're, they they don't do that. Um, so my first attempt at Jello shots, I think, was about four proof. Because I took a bunch of Jello shots to a party and people ate them, and then they were like, "You just brought Jello, Keith. You just <laughs> you brought Jello to this party. You are the worst." Um, so the next, so like a month later. At the next party, I was like, I'm going to ramp this up. Um, in Wisconsin, you can buy 150 proof vodka. Uh, it's really grain alcohol. All it is. <laughs> uh, you cannot drink this stuff. I know someone tried 75% um, pure alcohol, 25% water, just to keep it from catching fire. That's, that's why they... They sell 190 proof as well. I didn't buy that. I had the 150 proof. Uh, I made jello shots. Well, they weren't quite jello shots because I put too much alcohol in. They never set really. 
So they were they were Jello squishies uh, after a day and a half in the dorm fridge, and they were still pretty liquidy. I was like, well, let's just put them in the freezer. Maybe that'll that'll help them set. So then we had a tray full of frozen Dixie cups of Jello, um, which you can't get frozen Dixie cups full of Jello out of the Dixie cups. Uh, so what you have to do is you have to peel the Dixie cup, you have to tear it off of the vodka jello ice cube you have made. Um, and they did work because some people just started using them as ice cubes. Um, but about an hour in they had melted enough that they were really cold, but flexible people would tear them off and then they would pop them in their mouth and then they would go chew, chew, chew. Uh, and then the fact that they had 150 proof vodka in their mouth would hit them uh, as all the alcohol just evaporated into the, and then they go. <laughs> uh, uh, lately, we have the internet, so I could go look up an appropriate recipe for jello shots, and that's what I did, and I, I made jello shots in my, my Lego silicon molds. Um, and they were, I'm not going to say they were popular, because I don't think people knew what they were. Like they were in a, I put them out, and people were like, what are those? And I'm like, those are Lego jello shots. Check my tweets. Someone says check my tweets. Okay, I'm talking about Lego Jello shots, people. <sighs> anyway, they were, of the people that noticed they were Lego, they were like, these are great. Can you build things with them? I'm like, no, because they don't have holes in the bottom. <laughs> and you can try, but they're a little floppy. You should just eat them. They're Lego Jello shots. Um, uh, and then the next day was actual Halloween. Uh, I live in Santa Clara. I don't know why kids do not really come to our neighborhood for, for trick-or-treating much. I remember when my nephew was young, uh, he, he was there, uh, you know, they were living with us. He would put on his little costume and he would go one block west into Sunnyvale, where the, the streets were just covered with children in little costumes and every house was handing stuff out. Then you go one block east, our townhouse complex, and it's like, it's like the desert. It's like the desert of Halloween candy. Um, we would buy a bowl of Halloween candy and get like three kids would come, uh, which at the time was okay because then we'd have a bowl of Halloween candy we could eat. Um, and lately that's not okay because I should not be eating any bowls of Halloween candy. Um, so for the last couple of years, uh, we don't give out candy, we give out comic books. And at the beginning we were like, we'll give out a comic, well, we'll give out one comic book. And then we give out like four comic books. You come to our house, We'll give you four comic books. Uh, if I was eight years old, and I knew there was somebody in Racine, Wisconsin, was giving out four comic books, um, I would carry like two or three extra costumes with me so that I could change costumes halfway down the block and double back. You're like, you, you kind of look like a pirate that was here ten minutes ago. Superman. See, see, now I got something. No, that's, that's ingress. That's not a tweet. <laughs> I've been playing this game called Ingress. Uh, I don't know why I play this game called Ingress. Uh, Loretta plays it, uh, so she kind of sucked me into it. Uh, and we keep playing it, even though there's nothing in it for us. Um, my parents are visiting. She's, she's got my father to play it. Now my mother is playing it. it. We get nothing. We get nothing from this game, other than uh, it's, it's kind of an excuse to exercise. That's what I keep telling myself. Um, anyway. I don't know if I'm getting any tweets off to get there. Uh, speaking of exercise, um, like last weekend, uh, I did this fun run over in Santa Clara, and I don't know why. Um, they were like, hey, here's a fun run you can sign up for, give us $50. And I'm like, okay, here's your $50. And they're like, it's 8 a.m. on Sunday. And I'm like, you should have told me that before I gave you the $50. <laughs> and they're like, the time was on there the whole time. You just didn't look. So we emailed you and said, race starts at 8 a.m. And I'm like, well, I, I had thought you'd start a race at a decent time. And they're like, yes, that's 8 a.m. <laughs> 8 a.m. is a decent time if you want to close down city streets for a race. And I'm like, okay, I see where you're going with this. But in, retro, but in response, I will tell you, over in San Jose, 4 o'clock in the afternoon, they do the Santa run. 4 o'clock in the afternoon is a decent time for a run. Like you've got some stuff done during the day and it's not dark yet and there's milk and cookies at the end for you to eat. Um, anyway, so I signed up for this run. Um, 
I've done a bunch of 5K runs. Uh, I don't remember when I started doing them. It was years ago. First of all, Maureen and I would sign up for them. I think the first one we did was a turkey trot because uh, she got a free membership. Um, and then for years, I would sign up for the turkey trot. I was a planning commissioner in Santa Clara, and they're like, hey, if you're on the city council or the planning commission, you let us know because your city gets points. Mm -hmm. And then, near as I can tell, in seven years, I was the only person in the city that ever did the turkey trot because they would email me afterwards and go, and they had the list of all the points all the cities got, and Santa Clara would get two points. And I'd be like, I look at the table, it's two points per planning commissioner. So I'm it. I was, I was keeping Santa Clara ahead of Los Altos, which reliably got zero points. <laughs> Except for one year when their mayor ran, and they got four points. Anyway, uh, Maureen, we used to do the turkey trot, which is you get up in the ungodly early in the morning on Thanksgiving, and you go to downtown San Jose with like four billion other people, and then you run 5K, and then you're, you're done at 9 o'clock in the morning, and you go back to your house, you make your turkey, and they're like, and you can eat all the turkey you want because you did a run this morning. And I'm like, but I only burned about 400 calories jogging 5K, and I'm going to consume 5,000 calories of pie today. <laughs> so math doesn't, but still, you did something. Uh, we did the new turkey run. We did some other run. Um, this time, they were like, there's a 5K run and a 10K run. I'm like, well, I, I know I can run 5K, kind of. I don't know if I can run 10K. And I looked at the route, and the 10K route is just the 5K route twice. And I'm like, I'll sign up for the 10K. And that way, if I get tired, I know I can just walk back. Like, it's, it's a big circle. Like, no matter where I was, it was always shorter to walk straight back than to keep going, <laughs> except for very near the end, where the two, where the normal line and the math people, very, very near the end of the 10K, it was the same distance to walk or, or run back. Mm -hmm. um, so I did that this time, um, and it didn't kill me. <laughs> it did really, it did really hurt the next day, but didn't kill me. Um, and I didn't really even notice it was, it was that long. Like, I started jogging. Now, I will tell you, I was last in my age group. Um, people at the end of the race were like, hey, Keith, how'd you do? And I'm like, well, I finished. And they're like, do you think you're going to get a medal? And I'm like, no, there is no chance of me getting a medal. And they're like, oh, maybe you will. And I'm like, because uh, I was last, dead last. Because um, the other people that I saw running, they were fast. Uh, and I'm not terribly fast. Um, weirdly, like, I spent the first part of the race, because it, it's in Santa Clara, so I know a bunch of people. Uh, so I was actually chat. I was running next to someone and chatting with them for a while, chatting, chatting, chatting. Kind of didn't notice we were jogging maybe as much as I normally would. Had the earphones in, but um, midway through the first route, for the, through the first lap, uh, it was it was kind of warm. Uh, and it's in October, and so I, I make the joke I always make, which is this is Al Gore's fault. Because if he hadn't invented global warming, it would be a normal temperature now. But since he did, it's hot. Uh, and then this other guy that was jogging near us starts talking to me about how global warming is a farce. It's just something the scientists made up, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, really? I am jogging here, and you are a climate change denier, and you are making me argue with you. Because <laughs> you are wrong, sir. You are, it's, it's all I'm saying. Um, and really, the, hang on a sec. <clears throat> Live television, people. Live television. Uh, the fact that I could even vaguely talk about climate change while jogging, I viewed... It's a victory, a complete victory for me. <laughs> <laughs> ah, what else, what else? We don't have a lot of time left, I'm told. Um, I'll, I've talked before about our cats. Our cats are stupid. Um, uh, they don't catch things. Uh, they're not good for vermin suppression, <laughs> nothing. Uh, nonetheless, apparently one of our cats has figured out how to open our bedroom closets. Mm. <laughs> 
which is too bad because our bedroom closets were really the last safe place in the house. Um, if we had, I mean, occasionally, like, we would go, has anyone seen the tan cat lately? Go, no. <laughs> go, okay, well, let's go look in the closet. Because what would have happened is I would have been going into the closet, and maybe I'd left it open for a little while, and the cat would go, oh, look, a spot I could go explore, and the cat would go in the closet, and then I would close the closet. <laughs> And then the cat's like, well, now what do I do? And, and, and the answer is you just wait there. Because there's nothing you can do when you're a cat stuck in a closet. Uh, but apparently now the cats have figured out how to open them from the outside. Like if they are in the bedroom, he can push the closet door open so he can go into the closet. Now here's my prediction. Before, if I had gone into the closet, like before I'd close it, sometimes it would occur to me, I, I should check if the cat's in the closet. Otherwise, I'm about to lose a cat for a day. Uh, but now, I'm going to walk into my bedroom, and the closet will be open a hair, and I'll be like, I'd better close that closet before the cat gets in. <laughs> Except, of course, the reason the, it's open a hair is because the cat is in there. <laughs> okay? We got dumb cats. We have dumb, dumb... If they could figure out how to use doorknobs, we would be doomed. <laughs> In terms of other things, uh, dumb cats, yes. Smart squirrels. We have smart squirrels in our backyard. Uh, we are in a constant battle with the squirrels. Uh, we've been winning the battle for many years because I bought this bird feeder that has a motor and when the bottom of it will spin when there's weight put on it. And so a bird can sit in the bird feeder and eat out of the thing, but a squirrel is heavier. So the moment the squirrel touched the bottom of the bird feeder, it would spin around. It would throw the squirrel off. And it was kind of humorous. Um, not for the squirrel, for us. <laughs> um, about two months ago, we started to notice that the bird food was dropping more quickly than normal. And then one day we're sitting in the living room and we look out back and we're like, oh, there's a squirrel going for the bird food. This will be fun. We can watch the squirrel get thrown off the bird feeder. And then the squirrel will learn not to do that. And then the squirrel kind of slides down the bird feeder and then he grabs on to that little metal thing with all his might. Then the motor starts spinning. And the squirrel's holding on. Okay? And it's spinning and it's spinning, okay? And now we're like, uh-oh. Is the squirrel stuck? No, the squirrel's not stuck. It's spinning, 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 okay? Now the bird feeder is starting. The bird feeder itself is spinning enough that now food is flying out of the bird feeder, okay? In all directions. The bird feeder has just become a little fountain of bird food across the backyard. But eventually the squirrel flies off and then he eats off the ground for the next 20. We're out of time, people. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, I will see you all in a month from now. Oh. What did I get to? Rain? Did I mention that rain again? Did anyone get I don't know if I saw it.